Jessica Rowe, and I came from Calgary, Alberta, Canada to teach English here in Japan. I got accepted into the JET program, and by luck, I was placed in Kyoto City. Now, let me share my adventures with you. So, this is our view from our hotel room. And there's the pool guy, he's cleaning the pool. Totally want that job. Look at the skyscrapers. It's beautiful here. Here I am at the jet orientation. There's many, many people here. And they're all from all over the world, which is really cool. So there's like people from England, people from South Africa, people from uh, USA, Canada, um, Singapore. Even the Philippines we met people from. It was, it's really cool. It's like United Nations. And there's like, yeah. So it's awesome. All right. Hello everyone. So this video in particular is going to be about Tokyo orientation. Uh, basically, uh, once you're accepted into the JET program, you fly out to Japan and for the first few days you stay in Tokyo um, and you basically have like a huge gathering of a bunch of JETs from all over the world, which is really cool. At this orientation, you get a bag of loot. Yay, loot! And each panel is actually very informative. If you've never taught before, it would be really great to go to them because it's basically like condensing an education degree into two days. And uh, the one thing in particular that, that really struck a chord with me with uh, Tokyo Orientation is definitely meeting the people. You will meet the most interesting people from all over the world who all have completely different stories. And you get to make friends with them and you get to see their journeys and it's really, really cool. Um, I think out of this whole JET experience, the Tokyo Orientation was probably one of the coolest things I'd ever experienced in my life. Um, okay, so you, your plane lands in, in Narita, Tokyo, and then you make your way, we made our way by bus, so <laughs> we were like tired and sweaty and hot and we just wanted to like sleep and relax. And we get to the hotel, they take your bags to your, your room, and the first thing you have to do is run over to this room where you pick up kind of like your name tag, your bag of, of stuff. Um, you get this cute little sticker that you can like put on your shirt at the airport. Uh, oh, customs was kind of a little bit of a nightmare, sort of. No, not really. It was just a long wait. We were tired and hot. We were just like, ah, we just want to go to the hotel. Um, but definitely my pro tip to you go to the bathroom before you go on the bus because the bus took us like two and a half hours and there's no toilet on the bus so yes tidbit um okay so jet orientation i went with group b there's two groups i think maybe no three groups group a b c and group a had arrived a few weeks before group b did and i was a part of group b and in this orientation, you are going to hear probably the most motivational speeches you've ever heard in your life from other Jets and from people who work for the government in Japan. You're going to have your, I guess, like little booklet of information about what the panels are about and what times they're at. And uh, this year they made it mandatory so that you had to like sign a paper on your way out saying that you attended the panel. And uh, so these are examples of some of the panels. So you got team teaching and demonstrating effective lesson planning. Um, ALT discussion panels, so asking questions about senior high school, elementary, junior high school, uh, how to speak, the grammar that you'll use, what kind of writing things you can do, vocabulary, useful information, foreign language, education in Japan, uh, expectations on a jet, so all these things you're gonna get to attend in Tokyo Orientation. And <laughs> a lot of us were just dead tired. So we're sitting there and the information is really interesting, but you're like falling asleep because it's like crazy jet lag and they just throw you into this, okay, you gotta wake up early, do your thing, and then yeah, <laughs> so. Um, we did not 
have a lot of time to go explore Tokyo. I guess you could if you wanted to. We did meet up with a friend, Hiro. We had the most delicious ramen in the entire universe. You can make plans in the evening. Yeah, the orientation, they give you a lot of really valuable in information. It's just very, like, almost an overload of information on you, but it is definitely worth every moment of it. Um, one of the best parts of Tokyo Orientation was definitely the free food. They feed you breakfast, it's like buffet style, so you get bacon, eggs, toast, fruit, cereal, milk, juice, tea, coffee, anything and everything. And there was also lunch provided, and the lunches were um, uh, vegetarian. It's amazing food, and it's, it's really good. And you get to sit with random other jets, so you get to like make more friends and converse and learn about each other. So, one of the things I got is this magazine called A Jet Connect. And this has, it's, it was created by previous, previous jets, and they compiled a whole bunch of information specifically during Tokyo orientation, where you can eat, where you can drink, um, kind of like, arrival in town checklists, uh, arrival in town survival tips, grocery guide, um, an ALT's first day at work, a CIR's first day at work, the first NKI, uh, like just a whole bunch of really valuable information. So I would definitely keep that very, very close. It also, see there's like counseling information. Uh, they give you kind of like a, uh, example what to expect for the Japanese language course that you can take while you're on jet. They've got um, self-study techniques for beginners, so there's a bunch of links here that you can check out websites. Um, oh, this is a big one. Okay, so the British Council put together a Learn English package, which includes vocabulary, grammar, and speaking, and writing. So very I guess specific things that you can utilize when you're creating your, your lesson plans and whatnot. Um, team teaching. Some of the best ways to team teach. Some activity lesson ideas. So we've got some of those. Uh, this one in particular, I believe, was... Um, okay, course study for elementary school and for junior high and high school. This is a package, it's basically the curriculum of Japan summed down into this little package, in particular for foreign language activities and objectives and goals and things. So this is really, really the bones of what you should structure your lessons and stuff to. And there's also this useful information for ALTs. So this was what to look for in the staff room, what's important for you, school times, um, the roles of the teachers, like where you sit in the hierarchy of the school, the, I guess, like expectations of you, the breakdown of Japanese school. So it really, uh, oh, the dress code, uh, school behavior, behavior, social behavior, do's and don'ts. So yeah, they really, really make sure that you're well informed of mostly everything here. Oh, and this is interesting. Because we were staying at a hotel in Shinjuku, we got this uh, sheet that says watch out for street hawkers. Apparently there's a lot of, uh, I guess, tourists who get pulled in by these people who are like, oh yeah, let, let's go for a drink. And then it gets out of hand and they end up like taking your money or whatever and uh, so they, they warned us about that. And then your Japan and Natural Disaster Guide, kind of useful links and information to go to for, you know, if there's ever a disaster and you need help or whatever. It's cute, lovely, cotton canvas jet program bag. Isn't it lovely? You can walk around with that and be proud and be like, yes, this is, this is what I did. <laughs> the first day that you're in Tokyo orientation, you might get a little letter or a package or whatever that's an invite to your country's consulate in Tokyo just to get some more information and just to know where it is. It's kind of like a welcome reception party. 
and I attended the Canadian reception party at the uh, Canada Consulate Embassy in Tokyo. Okay, so we're at the Canadian Embassy and this escalator is probably the biggest one that we've ever been on. <laughs> it's like, it is, it's huge. It's like, <laughs> it's magical. <laughs> Canada! <laughs> it's really dark out so you can't really see much, but yeah, this escalator is huge. It's probably like 10 stories high. <laughs> if you're afraid of heights, you don't want to look down. <laughs> yeah. Baby, baby! Holy smokes, it's so high! <laughs> There's a Canada plane. I think it is. All right, here we go. We're at the top. It literally took us a whole minute to get up. That's how tall it is. Oh, there's Tokyo Tower. Okay. Here we are at the Canadian Embassy in Tokyo. Yeah. Best embassy I've ever seen. Look at that. So beautiful. All of us were here. We're just gonna have like a little orientation reception. Hey, Jazz, it's your old friend. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> this was actually a really, really cool event because we thought it was gonna be like super formal and, and all that stuff, but it was actually quite Canadian, kind of nice and laid back. And sure, they had ground rules. They were like, okay. Don't do drugs in Japan, you're gonna go to jail, and the Canadian government can do nothing about it, so don't be stupid. And we were told that if we ever needed resources like books or movies or links, or if we needed to contact them for anything, that we were more than welcome to. And then we had pizza and drinks and juice, and we took photos together, and I found a cardboard cutout of a Mountie and Apparently the Canadian government really wants Japanese students to study in Canada. So they're having all these information packages sent out to schools and stuff to say, hey, you should study in Canada because Canada is cool and you would love it. So I'm kind of really happy to hear that. So I've been kind of, you know, pushing it a little bit on to the students and I'm like, hey, you know what? Canada is a beautiful country. You should study there. Yeah, study in Canada. Woo. <laughs> um, okay, other tips for the Tokyo orientation. Definitely get contact information for people who you're interested in keeping contact with because there's a lot of people who I met at Tokyo orientation that I knew I would probably never see again, but I really wanted to keep connected with them to, you know, learn about their experiences and stuff in Japan and outside of Japan and in general, just be online friends, I guess. And it's, yeah, it's, it's really important to kind of keep together as a collective because we're stronger together. Ah, <laughs> I love that saying. I brought my dependent husband with me and he was able to stay at the same hotel, but we had to pay extra. So we paid in cash the extra amount for him. And we got to have our own room because of that. But usually you will share a room with two other jets. So there's three people to one room, I believe. Also drink lots of water. <laughs> they have free water there and you can just like sit there just chugging it back like crazy. All right, so that's basically the gist of uh, Tokyo orientation. Thank you very much for watching. And if you are interested in more information, please contact me. I would love to help you out. Anyways, so yeah, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.